Hey, everybody. Jim here, and I'm here with my man, Luke Hollywood. What up, Luke? Oh, what up, Jim? What up? We'll hear that a little bit later as oh. well. We're here for a little extra bonus intro here. Extra sauce. It's like a supplemental type deal <laughs> oh. going on here Hello. with the idea that we just want to let everybody know we end up having our manga reading club podcast that are going on right now on our regular feed that you're listening to this week's Manga Monday show. We want to let everybody know that, kind of get involved with those. Also, everybody, please rate and review the podcast. I'm just going to beg for that everywhere we can. But rate and review easy. wherever. That really helps us out. And also, though, we're going to go and kick off into this episode, not with us going right into the Pokemans, oh. but we're going to go off to Jason C. and his anime corner. And he's going to be talking about what I think is... A, can you believe what he's... <laughs> I'm trying to find it. <laughs> Bludgeoning Angel Dekuru Chan is I what he's going to talk it. about it pretty quick. And then we'll go off to our Pokemon deal. Just as a shout out, if you do go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash weird science manga, you can get early access to the Manga Monday show. Now, last week, we ended up having hot off the press. Actually, two weeks in a row, right? Ooh. We end up having hot off the press while we're back to getting things out this pokemon we did a while back so that Banger. comes onto the regular feed in the meantime though to replace that on our early access over on patreon we ended up doing your boy well, what is it called your boy, your boy Kong Kong Ming. Ming. now this is why i bring it up especially not just to make you inspired to go over and listen to it oh. at the patreon it's that it was jason's kind of pick and it was nonsense so kind i just want to say We'll see if bludgeoning angel decoro Chan is any good. But in the meantime, he might be banned from picking thin any ice. books. He's on thin ice, so it's going to go with this. But we're going to go off, listen to the anime corner real quick with Jason. Then we'll be back with the regular Manga Monday show, which is a Pokemon. So I hope everybody enjoys it. See you later, Luke. And we'll be back in just a moment. Greetings again, manga fans. As loyal listeners of Anime Corner know... I generally prefer anime that have a certain thoughtful quality to them. Anime that are respectable. Anime that are subtle. Anime that are, perhaps, even intellectual. Today's discussion, however, is not about such an anime. Our show today is Boku Satsu Tenshi Dokuru-chan, aka Bludgeoning Angel Dokuru-chan. This is a 2005 anime based on a manga, which was itself based on a series of light novels that somehow went like 19 volumes. I don't understand. Anyway, this show is ridiculous. It has gore. It has etchy. It has a bonkers premise. It is not a show to watch with your kids or your in-laws, and even watching it alone, you might want to close your window shades first so the neighbors won't see you. But I've got to admit, it's pretty fun. Dokuru-chan, our titular angel, lives with junior high school student Sakura Kusakabe. How long has she lived there? Why do his parents put up with a thing like this? Doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. Dokuru-chan is a bubbly, high-energy, disgustingly cute girl who distracts Sakura from his studies and occasionally murders him to death with her giant spiked club. This murder is usually done by removing the entire top half of Sakura's head, releasing a biologically unlikely geyser of blood spraying the walls, ceiling, and every surface of whatever room they're in. Not to worry, though, Dokuru-chan always resurrects Sakura by singing her Magical Girl Angel song, a song which I'll perform for you now. <coughs> and poof! Sakura's alive again, every time. Also, Dokura-chan flashes her underwear rather a lot. In fact, in absolutely every scene. Both Gore and Echi are taken so very, very far past the point of good taste that it stops being gross or titillating and just becomes funny. At least to me. Your mileage may, of course, vary. Eventually, another angel shows up and we learn something about what's really going on here. These angels are from the future. In this future, decades from now, Sakura is a scientist. He invents a drug that causes immortality. This immortality, though, is only a side effect. The main result and the intent of Sakura's drug is that it causes all women, and only women, to stop developing physically right at the age of 12. Yikes. So, Dokuru-chan was sent by God to kill Sakura in order to prevent him from bringing about this suspocalypse. Dokura-chan has decided that she likes Sakura, and that's why she keeps bringing him back to life, and also why she tries to distract him from his studies in the hopes that he never becomes educated enough to invent that perverted drug. With Dokura-chan having abandoned her mission, a second angel, Sabato, is then sent back to carry out the original assassination, and gore and hilarity ensue. The animation for this show is pretty basic. 
This is a gag show, in more ways than one. No one's tuning into Dokuruchan for Demon Slayer levels of artistic achievement, but the visuals do the job of getting the jokes across. There are a couple of interesting wrinkles for certain shots, especially those involving extreme facial expressions, the art quality suddenly gets much, much more detailed just for a shot. Do you remember when that used to happen on Ren and Stimpy? Well, this is very much the same idea. For instance, when an angel's halo is taken away from her, we find out, this always causes that angel to experience immediate, intense feelings of diarrhea. Told you this was a classy show. And we get to observe this experience on the angel's face close up and in great detail. Another case is that one of the side characters is just a photograph of a monkey that looks like it was cut out of a magazine by a first grader. Anyway, there's more to the plot, but the plot really doesn't matter. This show was originally an 8 episode OVA with each episode being 15 minutes. These have been repackaged on Crunchyroll into 4 episodes of just under half an hour each. There is even a sequel to this anime, but I think I've gotten all I need out of the premise with just this first year. Bludgeoning Angel Dokurachan is absolutely not for everyone, but if you want to see the kind of goofy, extreme story that only happens anime, crack open a beer, find yourself some privacy, and try out Bludgeoning Angel Dokuruchan. Now, back to Luke and Jim and the stories you can tell your family about without being too embarrassed. We are fighters, we fight until we win. The stairs are long, the breath of all that is and been. Ghost detectives. Everybody and welcome back to Manga Monday. I'm here with my man Luke Hollywood. What up, Luke? A oh, lot up, Jim. What up? We're here to get another banger. So, Ooh, gotta catch them all. <laughs> gotta catch them all. Uh, hopefully, people download them all. <laughs> <laughs> but with all of that, this might have been, oh. might have been, whoa, a suggestion. Maybe back in the day, you said that you think that Mark might have picked this back in the day. You know, he's always picking these old ones. Oh, it ones. tracks! I said when you yeah. said that, it's not like one of those where I went, "No way." This seems very up his street. It is the Pokemon Adventures, and with that, Pokemon itself it gets a little bit Dragon Ball esque when you try to figure out what's going on, what you're going to read, and what you're going to start with. But this is the start. Pokemon Adventures starts it off. We're going to have some info, and I'm sure that you will fill us in with all of that. But I'll this... pull out my Pokédex. Oh my goodness gracious, <laughs> will you? Will you? you end up yes. where this is one of those that's really, really quick. And oh, yeah. you're going to get the idea here of which one of us, me or Luke, is more of a Pokemon fan. Because with that, you're not going to get a ton in this first chapter, except no. if you are into the Pokemon in some sort of level. I think you do get enough. That I'm, I'm okay. revealing that it's me who's going to like it a little more than you. Not really saying that this first chapter is great or does a lot of stuff, but it does make me smile in a nostalgic way okay. going back and thinking about the deal, though I kind of got my love of Pokemon secondhand through my oldest son, Alex. But even that's nice for me to think back at when we would end up. And I have some stories with me. And Alex with the Pokemans, as he used to call it. Um, but with that, tell me some info on it. Yeah, so this is uh, maybe Mark's pick. Maybe uh, just what we're Pokemon doing. Mark, I call it. Oh him. my goodness. This is the Pokemon Adventures, written by Hidemori Kusaka, with art by Mado. Just one word, just Mado. Very mysterious. Uh, first published in March 1997 by Shoga Kukan. I think we've done them before. They sound familiar. Uh, and still published today. Still 1997 and still going strong, it seems. But the crazy thing is, so you think, okay, so if it's been going that long, it probably has a load of vibes, right? It only has 60 vibes. So I don't know. I don't know what Anders like spin-offs and one-shots and the likes 
Well, I don't know why only 60. Unless they just, like, you know, pump the brakes on it every so often, I suppose. Watch the Maybe. Pokemon movies. I mean, there's so many other things involved with it. You know, anime, movies, it's games. I mean, it's a global phenomenon. Empire. Yes, it is. Oh. Now, again, I would think that, oh, you know, we do, like when we talked about Yu-Gi-Oh! Mm. The idea in my mind that that phase is gone, but you keep always getting these waves and resurgence mm-hmm. of Pokemon. It always it's almost like Magic the Gathering in my mind. I don't mind. think Pokemon ever goes away. No, no, and then sometimes though I won't hear about it for a while, and then all of a sudden it becomes the hot ticket again because usually things like this end up being the idea. Like if I went and told you that if you have something popular, why does it fade away? I mean, mm. if it was so popular for a bunch of kids at one point why well you end up that the next bunch of kids don't want to do the thing that their older brother See, and sister cool. did they don't have pikachu in the fortnite and i think yeah and i think that throughout all of this i don't I, and maybe i'm offending people again oh i'm kind goodness. of offended. it's it's never cool i mean it, it's just pokemon you know what i mean like pikachu's not cool it's classic because it's classic yeah I, but it's fun and it just keeps gaining Momentum and more fans and more fans and things like that. Okay. Now, again, when we get into it, my stories are from pretty much back in the day when it first started, when the first craze hit. Oh, yeah. I have a couple of them, but any more info? A little, and this is where this is where it might all tie in. I thought this was interesting. So it's published in the West by Viz Media. Of course, that's where we're used to. Uh, and it is based off the popular Pokemon video game series. And mm-hmm. here is the kicker. It's based so very directly based off those games. Even the video game designer himself, Satoshi Tajiri, he once said that the manga is closest to how he imagined the Pokemon world to be. To so be th- with the game. This is yeah, this is like spot on to what his vision is. That's cool. And, and the original, the you know, Pokemon Adventures original title, mm. the Pokemon special, that sort of deal, where mm. a lot of people, when they go to try to find a reading order, or want to know, like a lot of people do look up, you know, Pokemon reading order based on anime. And they, you know, no, this is, you know, based on the video the games. Game. Even the guy called Reg, like that's the Pokemon game. Exactly. That? Exactly. Oh See, I yeah, so things. you have all that stuff. And yeah, like I said, I have my Pokemon experience secondhand, not just from my son Alex, but also from my nephews from England oh. that ended up coming over to the States here Hello, at love. the point when you ended up having the Pokemon movie come out and it wasn't out in England yet. Whoa. So they were all fired up. So I actually, and I forget, I guess it was whatever the first Pokemon movie was, I went to the theater and saw it. I had no idea what I was doing. You know, I just sat in there. And I was there with my nephews, of course, and they're younger than me. They were confused because popcorn here had salt and butter on it, and they thought it was That's caramel crazy. corn. They no thought way. it was like that sort of deal. And, uh, yeah, we watched it, and they were so crazed up to get back home to England so that they can throw shade at everyone that they went to the U.S. and saw Pokemon. Spill the beans. I was interested enough, but then later on, Alex Bourne gets older and he he really got into it. So I ended up doing that. Any more info going into that is it. Well, I like I'm sure they did like stage plays and all, but for the manga, that's all I could find. It's very popular. Uh, but yeah, apparently. just tons of stuff with the movies. Obviously, Pokemon is a global phenomenon. And Me. when they when they go back five hundred years from now and go back and talk about things like they'll say Pokemon Blackpink. These are the things that were crazy. The right? trendsetters. And, and when I talk about this is where I even argue sometimes with my man Eric on our other podcast where he said that the zombie craze was way over before Walking Dead before came Walking about. Dead. And I said to him, it's not a craze until people beyond that little niche of people mm. know it. Like he thinks that a craze is like all the people like zombie stuff. They're bored of it. No, 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 no. The craze you is the when your know. grandmom says, the we. Have you seen the Rick Grimes? Yeah, really. All of a sudden there, people, my mom ended up, I don't talk to her anymore. But at one point she was like, <laughs> do you like that walking zombies? Like she might get it wrong, but Bye. she knows what it is. Breaking Bad was another one of those the things, Walter you know, a TV White. deal. Yeah. Uh, but the we was a big one. Oh, where huge. all of a sudden 
and and that's where I get the idea where the poke. This is why it's crazy that it keeps going because really. You want to make something uncool, have your grandma and grandpa <laughs> playing it, then it's uncool, right? Whoa. But, yeah, it keeps going. And so you get into this, and you start out in the, you know, original deal here, of the original Viz manga volume. It does read standard, and I'm saying, you know, not standard manga-esque. It reads from left to right, which threw me off at first now, and Big it's time. crazy. Why is that? Like, that's when you know you have been reading for a bit, when it, it completely throws you off. It's and, very, when it's in the black and white, you know, you're, you're conditioned to read it like that. Yeah, you, know? you are. You are. And so you start out, and you're like, you get info. This ends up reading a lot like... You know, the video game, it does. It ends up where you're just kind of being introduced. You're not really getting real into, you know, characters as much as just their tropes. Mm. You have read the main guys. I'm the best Pokemon trainer ever. I'm going to catch them all. You you get it all in that first page, really, (laughs) where they say, you know, this place is called Ballot Town. And you see right away that they are trying to get some Pokemon here. And you end up where uh, a Nidorino is there and you have all the kids in town trying to capture this Nidorino Mm -hmm. and they're having problems where Red is trying to kind of, you know, coach him a little. He's showing off to the toddlers? Is that what he's doing? No, he's showing off to the little girl. She's like, what's up with the fisherman boy on the side? (laughs) Yeah, he just came back from Hunter Hunter. Yeah, look at him. And so he shows up but she is just trying to just throw, you know, the ball at mm. Nidorino without do really that. even softening him up a bit. Jeez. Again, you would know this, but this would be the original, like, tutorial where you're like, Pokemon need to be cut. Here's your Pokeball, but don't just throw it at him. It'll bounce off. And this is little girl's upset. And you have Red come in and say, listen, no, this isn't how you do it. If you want to catch a Pokemon, you got to weaken it first. Then throw your Pokeball. And what you do then is you need your own Pokemon to go fight. This is the basis of all of it, you mm-hmm. know? And so he has a Poliwhirl, and he ends up going, hey, Poliwhirl, go get it. I think that a bunch of people would be shocked right away. If, if you went back now and you know enough about Pokemon or whatnot, you would have expected Pikachu to be right there. Like, I'm already, not but, expected the Poliwhirls. Is- yeah, the Poliwhirls is the thing. No Pikachu. But you end up where Poliwhirl, go get it with the water gun, does its attack. It weakens it, or at least, like, you know, poor Nidorito can't see. Got water, and I don't know if it's water. I've never <laughs> been able to confirm what exactly. It's, water, a, so it's a little water spurt, sports that, you know, old Polly World's in, but ends up being able to weaken them and then captures them. And you get that. And the little kids, and again, this makes me laugh because you have Red here talking a lot of, you know, trash. Big smack he, talk. He's doing a smack talk here. And it reminds me a lot of times when I used to play some sports, mainly hockey for some Mm -hmm. reason, where you would get those guys who, yeah, they might be the best guy on their block of eight people, right? Mm -hmm. And they think they're the greatest. They think because they're so much better than the seven other people they play that they're actually great. And then they get, you know, pretty much the smack comes back at them when they're not really that. <laughs> but it's not so impressive when it's all kids. Yeah, that's you know? what I'm saying. He is talking smack in that way where, really? Like, they didn't even know to weaken the Nerino. And you're like, I'm the best. I mean, at, at points now, he thinks he's a Harlem Globe charter. He's spinning the Pokeball on his hand. Woo, wait, look at this on my finger. Woo, I'm great. And they're all applauding him. He's loving it. Look at that grin. He's laughing. He's laughing at all. Oh, my God. Look at that guy. And then you end up with a little bit of an introduction of everything. Everyone knows me in Pallet Town, and why not? I'm the best Pokemon trainer around. Whoa. Huh? What are Pokemon, you ask? No, I didn't, Red, but okay, <laughs> we'll go with it. And he says, strange creatures that live in the forests and the lakes. And, and you get lakes. a couple here that, you know, Charmander, you get some, you know, a little peek at that there's more i think that maybe they were worried at this point where you're like oh well that's great two two of these creatures like no there's a Nobody lot knows what a potty world is. yeah so then he ends up saying i don't know how many there are i don't know how many there are but you know what we know one thing don't gonna catch, catch them all you Bad gotta catch them all and he says he's gonna do that but who knows because he doesn't even know how many there are that's the problem <laughs> at this point just to he point talks out a big game yeah, he talks a big game of, like, again, like the small town kid who's now going to go to the big cities. Big he might dreams. be in trouble. But the the thing to point out, he doesn't even have a Pokedex yet. 
he, he hasn't Jeez. even been able to log what anything or whatever. Yeah, so you have this, and out of nowhere, you end up the one kid straight from the fishing hole says, hey, you know Professor Oak? And Red says, that old guy at your town? Yeah, yeah. The thing is, he's back in town. He came back. He was With traveling. He's days back. To and he has his his nephew there, like all these things going on. You end up where Red's like, well, what about that weirdo? What do I have to know? And like, oh, man, he's great. He knows everything about the Pokemans. And this gets Red upset. Like, he's like, what? You're going to talk to that old guy? Who talks to old guys, really? Like, he'd probably listen to Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin. And so he ends up where, ah, you don't need that old nut. I'll teach you everything you need to know. And so they they keep going, though. And it is a grandson, actually, not a nephew. Uh, Mm. And we're, you know, it's Gary, it seems. So he ends up where, like, hey. Uh, Professor Oak taught some grandson of his to be the world's greatest Pokemon trainer. His grandson, what? What's that guy got over me? And he's, he gets a little bit, but that's the thing. Never gets upset, right? Me, I'm mad at this point. I'm ready to maybe, like, hide in a tree and maybe kill him. They're going for the kneecaps. I'm sitting there like, what? Greatest trainer? <laughs> Not for long. He's going to catch some fists is what he's going to catch, and he's going to catch them all. It's what he's going to do Boom. any minute now. But he says, I don't care who he is. He doesn't stand a chance against me. Now, again, in this, don't really have gyms in this, you know, ep- in this mm. chapter, I was going to say episode, but you don't have the idea that he's going to go challenge him or he's going to be in a tournament yet or whatever. This is just him as a kid, very like almost like Tom Sawyer esque in this mm-hmm. town where mm-hmm. he's going around talking and whatnot. So, how does this continue? Well, you end up where. Red is walking. He's looking at his Pokeball. He's liking things. He's like, hey, they're Poliwhirl. Pretty cool. I like that Poliwhirl looks like he's giving like a jump up in the air fist pump. I, I don't know. Freeze frame in yeah, the ball. Doesn't it look like he's all uh, hyped up? Looks like he's also pointing the ball so that Poliwhirl looks directly into the sun he's and blinds blind him. Poliwhirl? I think he's trying to blind him he's because then ah, give it away. he can't get away, right? He's no. catching them all. He's keeping them all. Whoa. He's He's punishing them all. <laughs> He's That's torturing them Jeez. all. Um, I often wonder, and it's funny later where you do have it kind of play out, like, where do they keep all these balls? But he ends up There's going. There's one bit. I will get it. They through. fall out. Yeah. Like, and he's running around like, do they not like shrink? What happens? I mean, it looks like he's like, you know, a juggler supreme <laughs> at one point. But he ends up saying these kids, see you tomorrow. You know, I'll get going. And then starts thinking. Huh, Professor Oak, huh? Mm. Boom, he runs into a guy. And we see right away then that these guys are from Team Rocket. Not Jesse and James, these are grunts from Team Rocket. This is like the Team Rocket Stormtrooper type guys that are just there to shake their fist and yell stuff because they're not very good. In fact, they're looking for something. They're looking for the Phantom Pokemon. And again, it, it actually shocked me going to this and all that where right away you are dealing with Mew is what we, we find don't mess out. around. No, it is. That's right. Yeah. So and, and with that, he ends up bumping into this guy. The guy says, watch it, you worm at points in different translations actually says, watch it, you maggot. Oh, my goodness. And, like really over the top. And then they just walk away. And I mean, they're not that they're stomping or tromping, as it says here, but they're like. All right, we're going to get going. Don't worry about that loser. Let's go. And they go. And Red's like, where did they come from? And then look, and he's impressed. And I love the idea. He's like, man, those guys got some cool balls. It's one of those things, right? I say that all the time. But if you do look, they have the the superpower, like the giant balls. These ain't just any balls. Because they have the lines. So those are actually the balls that in the game, I believe, if I remember, have like a 50% better chance of capturing balls. So these guys have the goods. They may not have the skills to pay they the bills, but they have the goods, right? Yeah. And so he ends up like, oh my God, those are Pokeballs. And I think that maybe the one we're going with the translation might have been better too, because he has Pokeballs. That seems like, God, it almost plays off here that he's amazed that they are actual Pokemon. Well, did you just think they were like punks hanging out in the forest? Yeah, I just think he's like, you know, the, but they are pretty impressive, these things. These are better. So, you end uniforms. up where he goes, okay, Pokemon trainer, I'm going to go. You got the big R's for Team Rocket there. Still, Jesse and James, my favorite of anything Pokemon. I, yes. I really was hoping they'd show. Start rhyming and stealing. <laughs> you end up where 
you have read, follow them, and that's when they say we got to find the Phantom Pokemon. Now, for a kid who's got to catch them all and also is, you know, inspired with all that, this is really going from step A to step Z. Like, he's going from 1 to 100 very quick because we already saw he, his big thing is a polywhirl. I, I mean, the only one he's throwing shade at really is anybody with a gold dean. You end up where Whoa. I just want to throw that stuff out there. And it was one of those things when me and my son would play and he'd have just the cards. We didn't really play the game. He'd just have the cards. And what we would do is we'd almost play war where we each of us would get oh. a bunch of cards and then we'd put them down. And then Alex, my son, would determine who won the battle. And it wouldn't matter no matter what, whatever he had, he said they won. And at points, Goldeen was beating everything, like nonsense. And then he would just Brutal. laugh. Or he would just say, hey, who would win, Bulbasaur or Goldeen? And whatever, I had, Bulbasaur, Psh, Goldeen. Goldeen. He, and then he'd laugh and walk away. But you end up where he's going, he's, he's Phantom, you know, Phantom Pokemon. What's this? It goes and he's watching. And these guys from Team Rocket, they are searching around and doing this. Well, you end up having Red say, all right, thanks for the tip. I'm going to go and I'm going to come back and I'm going to get this phantom pokemon before you do that or my name's not red whoa and he goes off and then that's where he gets to the west wood and all of a sudden he's carrying about seven million pokeballs <laughs> like he has so many he got no pockets and one just falls and then he's there he's like but even then he's like giggling <laughs> and then he's like great they're not here all right where's that little old phantom pokemon and he hears some things going on and then sees a kid who we you know, find out Professor Oak's grandson, but also you see the Phantom Poke, you see Mew there. And he's like, oh man, that creep he got here first. But he's really interested in this battle where this kid has a Charmander and he lets it out to go after Mew. Now with that Charmander, who I think is one of the cutest of the Pokemon, I really do like Charmander. Charmander is getting the crap kicked out of him. Charmander is going to die. There, there's no doubt about it. He cannot fight. You do get that deal, though, that you see, oh, my God, this phantom thing they're calling. Now, they do mention Mew. By the end, it's so overpowered. But that's the thing. Red being this hick kid, right? I don't want to offend anybody. But he thinks that you just fight till you win. You, there's no losing. And you never easy. retreat. The idea of, you know, we retreat now to fight another day. This does not calculate with mm -hmm. him because... He's kind of, I said, he's the guy who played with a bunch of kids and he thinks he's the best. Oh my God, you can do this. And I think that that was set up enough, right? Maybe. Mm. I know that you don't like this that much because <laughs> the character work is very basic. But I mean, like, we do get, you know, we do get that bit with Red. So yeah, this like whole deal is to just set up just the, the wow factor lesson. of the Pokemons and stuff because he ends up like, what's going on? And this guy who he doesn't know yet Ends up in the middle of the battle. I'm telling you, he's getting his butt handed to him. Mm -hmm. Says, enough, Charmander, return. And you end up like, what? What the? And the weird thing about this is, is reading this again, I kind of got the idea that he was amazed at the control that he had over Charmander. Like one of those where he, like, he must be real good because he can order him around more than I can. Like if I go Poliwhirl, yeah, I yell out the water attack, whatever. But he gets all crazed that I can't. Be... does what he does. Yeah, yeah. But it's not the case. What he's mad about is the idea that you have given up. Also, mm -hmm. in a funny little way, this also shows you that something like a, a Mew that's really powerful. If you do give up the fight, it, it seems Mew's not going to continue that fight against you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The Pokemon goes back and the ball is over. I tried. Oh well. See you later. But you end up having Reds like, no way. Why did you give up? Now, again, this is Poliwhirl, but I think that he's been able to lean on that for so long. He sends Poliwhirl into this battle. He ends up saying, oh, my God, and he's mad. He says, you, you almost had it. What do you think you're doing? Why, why did you quit? Kids just like looks at him. and You get the ellipsis, right? He's not <laughs> saying anything. You get ready. He's all fire up. And he's like, my turn. Go, Poliwhirl. Now. I think that maybe what you would have thought if you originally read this, didn't know anything or didn't play anything, would be the idea. Because the whole setup of this was only, you have to weaken this. I thought this was money in the bank. I thought it was that, oh my, you ended up having this kid. 
Charmander ended up weakening this he meal, and now blow. he gets the finishing blow and will actually think that he's the greatest because he did that, but not realizing that he is on the shoulders of giants here. But he's not because Mew just wrecks Poliwhirl. I mean, just destroys Poliwhirl without, I don't even know, I guess in the segment, doesn't even look like it realizes that Poliwhirl is any threat. Looking the other way, but I swear to God, if you could, you could have Mew there filing his nails. I mean, that's how that's how insignificant Poliwhirl. He does look over it a bit, bash, boom, down. Poliwhirl is down. I mean, down. And I do like this because what will continue on with this and why Red is different at points and why you end up having him the main character and things like that is he actually cares for the Pokemon. That's one of the things that ends up being a big thing for this, that he does actually care for them. And so when Poliwhirl goes down, it's not like, oh, well, I'll go catch another, whatever. He is upset that you ended up having it. But this guy, again, we'll figure out who he is later. But he's like, you know, what's going on? You end up having Red say, come on, snap out of it, Poliwhirl. And you have this kid say, didn't you notice anything while you were watching us fight? I could tell almost immediately there was a vast difference in strength. There was no way we'd win. I stopped the fight. I didn't get my Pokemon hurt. I didn't. And he says, know your limitations. You only beat yourself. Remember that, kid. And I like this only because the idea that up until now, Red has been smack talking and thinks that he's the guru of all the Pokemon. He's down a few pegs. He is down a few pegs. He's down a few pegs enough that he's interested in maybe going and finding Professor O (laughs) because he realizes, you know, he he thought he was the big cheese. He ain't. The big man on campus has turned. Now he's nobody. But to end it there, he actually says, like, oh, my God, I can't believe I lost. But in that, then, you then have Team Rocket show up because there's the burnt Charmander ended up there. You end up where, oh, my God, what's going on? And you get a name because they go and he's still, you know, sitting over old Poliwhirl who's, you know, thrown for a loop. He's in concussion protocol here. And he's like, what do you do? What have you done here? What's going And they do end up saying because there's a gang of them. Hey, you know, we got to get Mew. That's what counts. You know, he still has to be nearby. Let's go. They run off and you end up having red. Now, the big thing about this is, is that Mew you know, uh, spoilers, but it's real connected to Team Rocket that they ended up creating them, and they have to Whoa. get them back and things like that. So there is that behind the scenes as well, if I remember. Yes. But you end up where he, you know, then, I mean, look at Polly Whirly. He's not doing any fist jump and bump deal in there. He is frazzled. I mean, he looks bad. And so you end up where you have Red go, and he goes back into the town. He, he go ac- actually a little outside of town to Oak Pokemon. I think it might be like research center or whatever, but he goes over to that to say, maybe I should, you know, talk to Professor Oak. And he says, so this is old Professor Oak's lab. They say he's a mean old guy. So I always kept away. But I guess the only place I can learn to be a great Pokemon trainer is here. He's trembling. He doesn't want to ring the bell. And then he rings it. And the best is it rings. Bing bong. Bing bong. Bing it rings. Bong. So with all of that, you get this set up very quickly of, okay, there's Pokemon. You get a couple of them. You get some fights. It's kind of nice. Mm. Whatever with that. You get I, the rivalry. I like that. And that's the thing of him wanting to be the best, but realizing right off the bat that he isn't. But, I mean, it's a genius setup. It, mm. it is always going to be a scavenger hunt, but it's a scavenger Timeless. hunt for the next Pokemon. So that's the variety of it. And you set it up right away, so it works. And, yeah, it's timeless. It's a classic. And, like I said, back in the day, my son was into Pokemon. But at first he wasn't, just to to spell out what happened, is that my wife was against Pokemon when it first came out and when it, you know, started to make news and things make because big. she thought it was cruelly the animals. Oh they my killed goodness. the animals. You can't. And uh, really, you have a kid thing where you think it's about killing animals or whatever. You you are producing serial killers. Then. <laughs> that is one of the first <laughs> things grim. that happens. Right. So you can't have that. But again, the big play was no, no, no. They just go to sleep. They just go to sleep and then they go back in the Pokeballs. Right. So, but it takes convincing. So for a while, for, uh, you know, maybe a year or so where Alex wanted to get into it, I think he had some cards, Tanya took him away. He was not allowed to do anything Pokemon. Okay. So uh, about a year later, they ended up, we were going, I think we were going to a movie. I forget what movie, but 
at that point, there was a, I think, a Burger King thing where you would get a kid's meal, a Pokemon meal that had a card. And we were going, Tanya had loosened up a little, but thought, you know, we're going out. It was going to be a fun day, the the family. At that point, it was just me, her, and Alex. Mm -hmm. So we were going to go out, and she thought, that'd be neat. You know, we'll get this meal for him on the way. And so he gets it. And again, to go back to Goldine, I swear, if I'm not, you know, mistaken, he ends up getting the, the meal, opens up the card and goes, Goldine, I have like six of these already, and goes, oops, because he wasn't <laughs> supposed to have them. Tanya was furious. God, I then buddy. find out then that he had been playing Pokemon at recess for the, the year, Behind you know, scenes. that whole school year, keeping it from us. But then Tanya ended up like, oh, well, and that's what happens. When Tanya ends up doing all these things, the minute that we get back, she goes hog wild. He had so many Pokemon things, and I remember him getting a poster, some things with the movies that were coming out and whatnot. Whoa. But we ended up right there at that point going to a role-playing game convention. I was big on that because I was a nerd, right? So not now. I'm so cool. But no. we ended up going and, you know, make it a little short. By the end of the, the weekend, on a Sunday, I wanted to go back and see if there was anything else I could buy or wanted to buy. And during that whole thing, Pokemon was a thing during there. They had also had card games. And Alex had played in a LARPing, a live action deal of Pokemon where it was kind of fun. He was little, but he was just running around this room where they were throwing foam balls at these people. And he liked it. But on the last day we went to, I believe it was the Wizards of the Coast deal. And I was looking for some Star Wars role-playing games. I forget what I was looking for. But in the meantime, they were packing up some stuff. This guy just came over to Alex and said, hey, you want these? It was three garbage bags full of Pokemon cards. <laughs> just ran, just everything. Just Pokemon. Because of all the, the games they had run and demonstrations and things mm-hmm. like that. He said, yeah, we, we got them. And he took them home. He ended up, I swear, he started counting them. I told you before. He, start, he lost track. Like the one time he's going to count them at like 2,000 something. There was more than that. I don't even Whoa. think it was halfway through. I swear. I estimated at the p- time that 10,000 cards. It, it was so many. But again, this was real early on in the deal. Mm. So there, I don't even think there was like fancy cut. But still, he had those cards. He was trading them for snacks at lunch at school. I mean, he was living large on those cards for a while. But yeah, it's a shame. I, I don't know of any of that stuff ever remained but boy he was into it then he got later he got into Yu-Gi-Oh a bit but it Yu-Gi-Oh's... never it never topped the Pokemon it, really? it, it almost like he was chasing the dragon oh. afterwards and he, it never, Not, hit, never uh, it seen. never hit as much as the Pokemans but oh. yeah yeah so that's a little little bit of personal stories there there, just to get us over a half hour because we ended up this is a very very quick, quick. chapter it's not many pages quick and, and easy you get the basis. The problem is I can't say what this would be like if I was just reading it without knowing anything. I mean, everybody knows a little bit about Pokemon enough that it's a shame that you don't get more into maybe some character work or stuff. But this is based off of the video game, which, you know, Game Boy stuff. It wasn't exactly, you know, Shakespeare. Cornish. So it's just trying to kind of tie in and do that. So I liked it. I mean, I'm not going to go crazy about it, but. No. No. What would you give to Pocket Monsters? I'm not going crazy about it. Um, I mean, if you're, yeah, like, I I imagine that if you're more into the games, this is probably like because you just got red and all the game stuff, but ah, it's not my, not my cup of tea. I think I'll go flat seven. I mean, like, it, it does a good job in introducing, but. Well, I mean, we've had better chapters, you know. And you're, I don't think you're going to continue on. No, no way. I don't. I'm not so excited about who's answering this doorbell. No, Big well, bong. it's Professor Oak. Oh, he is. He isn't nice at first. But, oh my You know goodness. all that though. Again, this isn't going to be something that if you're not into Pokemon now, I yeah, don't think that you're going to be like. I got to. I got to keep. You know, reading this. No. I, I don't know. This is more for people like me who kind of got a kick out of things, even secondhand. To kind of go back now and read and have a smile on your face. And it's very quick. It's very nice. You get the tropes. They're very much in your face. But that's if if you're basing something off of video games, a lot of times, especially back in the day, they're going to have to do that because you got to get mm-hmm. right to it. You, you can't waste time. You, no, you're diddy, diddy. basically trying to get a game that's for 12 year olds, 8 to 12 year olds. You're not going to end up being too fancy. No. So I, I don't mind. I'm giving it an 8 with oh. this. But I just want to know, are, are you... 
uh, got a pocket monster there. You happy to see me, Lou? <laughs> is what I oh, want to come over and see oh, me Oh, my someday. goodness gracious. <laughs> but, yeah, it, it was kind of nice to get to read. I, I really should have sent it to Alex and told him to read it and, and every say, day. what what do you think? I don't think he would have read it, and he probably would have lied. But that's just him. He's not concerned with this. It is what it he, is. He, to, you know, a kid who loved Pokemons, and now he's like into muscle cars and guns. Uh, it, it's just two things that are so. I don't think Team Rocket do that. No. There's no way. I'm like, here, I send him videos. Look at this black pink black video. Pink. And I don't want to listen. He's just so shame. Pokemon, it's either. because he's he's narrow minded. Oh my All goodness! The rest of you, Bing bang. <laughs> All of you. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, that is that. But there you go. yeah, thanks everybody for listening. I hope that you enjoyed that. The Wolfman. The Wolfman oh, did. The Wolfman did. The Wolfman told me. He Maybe did. he's a Pokemon too. He Jeez. might be. That you know what. Why Whoa. don't they have like you know uh, the Universal Monster Pokemon? So like you've got to get Pikachu's. the Draculas, right? And that'd be cool. They got the bats. That's basically Dracula, you know, close enough. Uh, yeah, with that Mr. Mime, the worst. He's my oh, least no, favorite. He's I just terrified. wanted to throw that out. He's the worst. Yeah, he's terrified. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no thanks. Also, with that, uh, you remind me of Bulbasaur. Oh, uh, that's oh, that's good. I, I just want to throw it out there. Uh, that's shame. I thought That's what I was charming that, yeah. because I'm so oh, charming. Oh, because you're so charming. Oh, Are you? Goodness. Nope, that didn't track. Whoa. <laughs> there it is. That's the lie horn. Uh, but yeah, thanks everybody for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. I know that Luke didn't, but it was quick. No. So it was it was painless is there what it was. I liked that. I got a kick out of it. So we'll go. Who knows? Pokemon Reading Club. It could happen. <laughs> you never know. Not you on my never, watch. ever know. Oh, my goodness. But <laughs> with all of that, go over to our Twitter at Weird Manga. Follow us. We'll follow you back. And you can tell me that you like the Pokemons. You Maybe well, tell, tell me your favorite, your favorite Pokemon. Pokemon. Yeah, I'd love that. Tell me your favorite Pokemon. It'd be awesome. Also, go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash Weird Science Manga, where you can get a lot of early access to this Manga Monday show. And also get our picks of the week that comes out each week from the chapters that are released, mainly mm. from Shonen Jump. I mean, they are so or, you know, that sort of deal. Mm. Uh, we pick three books and we talk about those chapters that week. So then we have the rest on our weekly right. review show. So with all of that, thanks, everybody. Go catch them all. All that stuff. I also like the theme song. Oh, the, the Pokemon. I really do like that. I get fired up every time because you really be it the is very best. I mean, seriously, it might as well be a combination of every song before Rocky movies and stuff. It, the very best. I love it. I, now, I we do. have the black pink cover. Oh now, yeah. Now, if oh, we yeah. did that, it might end up it, it just blowing my mind. The Wolfman, the Wolfman might like, it. and also Indeed. I might, I might end up emotional damage. <laughs> I might have emotional damage <laughs> if that happened. I Beautiful. don't know. That could happen. But thanks everybody, and we'll talk to you next Monday. <laughs>